Namaste and welcome to the fourth season of Youth TV show produced by Leadership Academy. Youth TV show is an attempt to foster the creativity of young minds by providing a platform to address the issues that concerns our society. My name is Anushka Pant and I'm the winner of Nepal's Top 7 Debaters 2013. In today's episode, we are featuring the final round of Nepal's Top 7 Young Poets 2013. My name is Rani Das from Kriyog Higher Secondary School and the topic for today is Lord Buddha and Nepal. I'm going to take you on a historical ride. We are Nepalese and Lord Buddha is our pride. No matter in the ocean, low or high tide, Buddha was born in Nepal. Now I believe everyone is on my side. The world pretend to be unknown about the global icon. So we Nepalese should step up and do something. Come on. We are Gorkhalis. We are unstoppable. Therefore, we must head on. We must prove this point so that all the doubts are gone. It's true, Lord Buddha does not have Nepali citizenship. But that's not the secret that we Nepalese should keep. When foreigners mention Buddha as their property, it hurts me down deep, makes me and my motherland weep. Lumbini is his birthplace. Smile is what he wants to see in everyone's face. We Nepali are humbled and nobled. Buddha was born in Nepal. This truth should go global. At the end, I don't want the world to pretend. First of all, Buddha was born in Nepal. Most of all, he belonged to the whole world. He gave his life serving for mankind. His deed and personality is very defined. Once again, Buddha was born in Nepal. And everyone should keep that on mind. Thank you. Hi everyone. Today I am going to recite a self-composed poem on the topic life. What's life? Is it a challenge that we should accept or is it a tragedy that we should face? Well, we may not know where we came from or we may not know why our heart beats. But we all know that our life is full of ups and downs. It's about sometimes happy and sometimes bumpy rides. Not everyone is blessed with a happy life. Not everyone's life is full of happiness. So don't worry about tomorrows and regret yesterdays. Just live life in present. Life is dynamic. It's about seasons and changes. Life is too short to live with a treasure undiscovered. Let them all be found and enjoyed. Life is not just the hours spent awake. It's also about the dreams. Never give up because life is only once lived. Thank you. Hello everyone. This is Ashna Hara from Shivatara School. Today I am here to recite a self-composed poem which topic is Standing Tall. And it starts like this. Some kings rule their kingdom sitting down, surrounded by luxury, soft cushions and fans. But if I was a king, I would stood strong, stood proud and stood tall. When some yell for violence for an angry revenge, I would be preaching peace and take our name into different range. I would turn a foe into a friend, merging all the states, fighting for everyone's right, working all day and night. If I was a king, I would work for people's welfare and I would wipe their tears and say, don't worry, I will take care. Unlike other kings, I would be incredible and spectacular. My decisions would be straight like a ruler. If I was a king, I would surely turn dreams into truth. And I would always stood strong, stood proud, and stood tall. Thank you. Monasha Pradhan, grade 8, St. Mary's High Secondary School. The title of my poem is Light of Asia, dedicated to all Nephilim. The birth of that divine deity a dynamic entrance into Nepalese hearts, a null and void existence to the mere volant, euphoria to benevolence. The footsteps of that divine deity, an exquisite imprint on Nepalese brains, an apathetic light to those of dark lanes, a holy ray to those who are sane. The words of that divine deity, euphony to Nepalese heirs, a slur to those who can't bear, a pleasing melody to those who care. The reminisce of that divine deity. The reminisce of that divine deity. A devout to Nepalese recollection. A deranged memory to the abrasive. A vow to our proclamation. That divine deity. The light of Asia. Gautam Buddha. 
born in Nepal, purging the world, scouring the madness, a fact that is yet to be recalled. Thank you. Forgotten magic, blue as the ocean, blue as the sky, blue as the voices saying goodbye, far as the mountain, close as the hill, is that loneliness which lives to kill. Sometimes it is the sun, radiant and bright, otherwise like a thief, the fear of a thief at night. Most of the time loud, like horrible violence, otherwise like the time before a storm, just silence. Mostly seen as a devastating part, otherwise contained but hurting my heart. Invisible it is, but it is still here. Mostly seen as a devastating part, otherwise contained but hurting my heart. Invisible it is, but it is still here. There is only fear, fear and fear. Big fish in a small pond, when, we, when I stay inside, going out, getting lost, and finding someone who wouldn't guide. Where is God? Where is God's might? Because I can only feel fright, fright, and fright. We cannot live, strong fear to die. Both are choiceless, but to cry. Asking where to go, to break this chain. But even the world is drowned, so we find pain again. Why is sky the limit? I say that is wrong, because the higher it is, the darker it gets. Why do we want to reach the top, a point where it is easiest to fall? A mirror doesn't reflect you because it doesn't have a voice. We say dreams come true every day, but wait for them at night. We say everything has a reason, so we lost free will. But shouldn't something be first lost so that it can be found or discovered someday? We aim the sky and try to reach it. We want to reach the top, a place so lonely. Have we forgotten the magic of the world? Because the view is better from the place where it happens. Thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Shriya Shrestha from St. Mary's and the title of my poem is Backstabber. I don't know what happened, alright? I guess it all started from a stupid fight. She tried to punch my mother, so I took her fist and threw it right back at her. And from then on, she hated me, titled me as the backstabber. She said she was victimized by me, that too, to my father. He slapped mom and sis, but hey, I guess it doesn't matter. Cause it ain't the first time we got stuff we didn't want. We packed our bags, guess we were leaving out the front door. I didn't even look back one last time. I thought from now on, everything is just gonna be fine, but what was I thinking? I ain't living a fairy tale. This ain't no perfect life. This ain't no dream. All I wanted was just a safe childhood. Just a pretty little family with all the love and harmony. Nights when all you have to fear is the monsters under your bed. Not the wounds or beatings that your mother might get, even after waiting all night and being torn apart by God knows million reasons, astrological stars. I want that to know. I always hated you, that was wrong, but now it's right. And now I'm just waiting to see you walk off my sight. Cause you never respected mom, never stood beside her. Always against her, always against her, never for her. You gave my mother a hundred thousand sleepless nights. All you gave my mother, little sister, was fear and fright. And all you gave me? No, made me was a little you. You made me angry, angry at everything I do. You're the reason why we don't have close people anymore. You're the reason why you will be alone. And this won't make me cry. And even if you beg, I'll give up trying. Trying to make, ex make excuses for your absence. Trying to make peace even in this darkness. Trying to lie to my family so they can feel comfort. Trying to hide the truth, trying to keep secrets, trying to clean up your messes. I'm trying to join forces just to protect us from you. But I will try. I'll try not to be the little you. I'll try to love my mother and make my sister brave. I'll give my mother all that she could never get. I'll give her one night, just one night where she won't be let down. One night without a fight. One night where everything's right. One night with due respect. One night safely to bed. Thank you. Namaste. I am Nishma Gautam, and the title of my poem is Bird of Cage. Trapped in, finding a way to escape. I look outside the world and I can't help because I want to fly. I want to fly so high, so high that you won't be able to catch me ever because you don't know how smart I am and how clever. I'm just waiting to get out of this cage and that would be the day I'll show my anger and rage. But unfortunately, you've trapped me in and made me the victim of all your sins. You become the ruler and fill up my life's page. You've made me just a bird inside a cage. I've just been loyal to you. I've lived my life to seek happiness for you. But you treat me as your feet dirt. Well, you know well this is not what I'm worth. I'm just waiting to get out of here. That would be the day you'll have to pay for each of my tears. 
Just wait to see me fly, and then yes, you'll ask yourself why. That would be the day I'm no more shy, and you would be the one to cry. Because you've ruled the world enough, and I know for me it won't be tough. Because inside this cage of you, I've managed a home, and I believe I can maintain a society on my own. Just because I'm silent doesn't mean that I won't speak. Because a volcanic mountain is silent until the lava reaches its peak. So enjoy your dominance as much as you can. Show your power of being a man, but be ready to face a day of this age. See how I fly above when I get out of this cage. Thank you. My name is Sashwat Karki. I'm studying in class 12, and I'm from Rice School. The topic of my poem is coming closer. Forgive and forget. I assert not to forget you. In the rustle of leaves, I hear a song for two. It's approaching the conclusion. We can hear it from afar and from near. Yes, definitely a constitution resolution. Confusion's door was left partly open. A woman, a mission, bringing close up to us all. We worry and we hurry when coldness comes in for scuffle. Our discoloration, our delusion, the pictures on the wall. But when the spring came and cleared up the same, it brought closer to us all. A confrontation, a decision, a fly on the wall. Wagon strike, wagon protest, where again and again the misunderstanding among people. Let us all not regret about anything. Let us all forgive our past envy and do not forget the asserting. And yes, definitely, let us all come closer and amalgamate and make a united, peaceful and prosperous Nepal. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Saurabh Basal. I'm studying at Kathmandu Model College, Grade 12, Faculty of Humanities. Today I'm here to recite a poem. The poem is entitled, Of Moisture and Man. The poem talks about the different aspect of moisture and man. But this poem doesn't draw any conclusion, is there is no difference between a monster and a man. Here's my poem. Of moisture and man, I can't understand the difference that lies in their heartbeat, that lies in their bosom, that lies in the wall above their head, that lies in the wall beneath their feet. I simply can't understand. Of moisture and man, I can't understand the very nature, the very state they are in. When they quench their thoughts with the blood, red warm boiling blood, they fill their empty, empty stomach. I simply can't understand. Of moisture and man, I can't understand the warmness, the walls of the womb they lived in for months, the hand they held when they were born, I simply can't understand. Of moisture and man, I can't understand the momentary joy, the satisfaction, the pleasure, the solace they find, they discover, they envision, and they possess in their heart when they become slayer, try to trying to destroy their own images, trying to destroy their own shadows, I simply can't understand. At last, at last, I can't understand the difference within myself. A monster within myself, a man within myself, a me who knows everything, a man, a me who does everything, a monster, a monster and man, I simply can't understand. Thank you. My name is Bisal Vassal. I read in New Environment English Boarding High Secondary School. I am from Kotia Varupandai and the title of my poem is A Poor Boy. Once in a heart lived a boy, smile in the mouth but no any joy. Life was is under a small heart in the morning grass he used to cut. Living was he the life without the joy which should be had by a child boy. Mother was died after his birth, then he and his father were in the earth. Father of him was an army, son of him was very charming. Themselves in heart they used to hide. During the war his father too died. Just a heart he had of his own, everything he had by storm was blown. Help me, he says to everyone, for helping him, there is no one. Then a day in heart he died to the heaven, then he glided. By his death, no one would gather. He went to the heaven, near to the Father. Thank you. First of all, good afternoon, y'all. It's me, Kuspa Sarma from Mani Mukunda College. Today, I'm here to recite poem, and the topic of my poem is my internal beat. Provide me a twinkling stars. Provide me a twinkling stars, provide me a sound of guitars, provide me a sound of guitars, provide me a monsoon rain, provide me a monsoon rain, provide me a travel on a train. It's life, it's life, nourishing by others, 
It's life nourishing by others. It's life written by feeders. It's life written by feeders. It's life wandering to and fro. It's life wandering to and fro. It's life similar to a thirsty crow. It's life similar to a thirsty crow. Rolling stone gather no moss. Rolling stone gather no moss. Time should not be lost. Time should not be lost. Oblig me to estimate plan. Oblig me to estimate plan. Inspire me to fill up can. Inspire me to fill up can. Life is not a race. Life is not a race. Uniform your pace like polyvals drivel. Like polyvals drivels. Eradicate and riddle. Eradicate and riddle. Eradicate and riddle. Thank you. Hello everybody, this is me Prakriti Budamagar representing Kathmandu Model Higher Secondary School. I'm a student of humanities and I'm studying in 12th grade. Today I'm here to present an English poem in which I've tried to express the resentments of a lady who's been putting up with all the changes appearing in her beloved with the passes of time. The poem is entitled, What Do You Know? It goes like this. Even if your every new symbol light is cheating, I'll still wait for you till my heart's last beating. You don't know what a change has left me with, nothing but memories begging me to have faith. I can't forget you and I won't forget you no matter how bad you go. Unaware of all this, what exactly do you know? The person I see right now doesn't seem to be the person I knew in the past and the changes are unimaginably vast. But you're the person who's gifted me with the most beautiful memories that I can't simply outcast. So I've come to realize that I was meant to love you, love you forever and love you till the world would last. I'm the one who's always been by your side from years ago, unaware of all these, what exactly do you know? A cold chill goes down my spine every time you make a move. I seem to be encrossed with the fear that one day you could completely leave. But I patiently wait for the day when you'll change back into the one from my memories. And I hope and I wish for the moment to be treasured for centuries. Maybe this is why letting you go is an absolute no. Unaware of all these, what exactly do you know? Thank you. Hello, I am Samata Shrestha. The title of my poem is Insanity Versus Humanity. Your soul wrapped up and packed in wrath and anger. You're so foolish, you don't know you're pushing yourselves to danger. We have gone so ruthless, we kill our own mothers. Entitle ourselves as killers. No, we do not become any stronger by killing innocent creature. What's wrong, people? We fight and we fight and we fight, but don't know the thing we're fighting for. We pray and we pray and we pray and become prey of our own religion. We love and we love and we love so much, we have become heartless. We are the super creatures <laughs> who said that. Do we ever bother to make a second blunder? Oh yes, we like to keep quiet, but we chatter. Always hit the antitho for nonsense flatter. We spy on the stranger as if they'll snatch our bladder. Clap, clap here and clap solo clatter. Wait for your dreams to get shattered and realize what really matters. Technology's not making us any smarter. We're growing more dumb and stupid, rather. Our vague dreams won't even come together. We're so busy fighting for each other. We have pulled and stretched development and centuries, built the largest countries, cut down the forest trees, messed up with our knowledge and degrees. Humanity is on sale, that also for free. Misunderstood happiness, thinking money is the key. Money can buy peace and love, so all the money in the world is worthless, but peace and love is priceless. We have chucked up innocent lives, always armed with guns and knives, still managed walls in our pretty lives. We are deaf to needy cries, we don't care if someone dies, because all we need is the money prize. Is it even worth in this planet Earth, or is it precious than someone's birth? We're the super creatures <laughs> who said that. Do you still not feel hurt? Then you're not a human, worse than a demon. Development in Sudan is not easy that we can forget about war and make a better plan. Or what about Iran where life's like a war camp? Ever wondered about Putin or their lifeless ban? Children are crying, soldiers are dying. Are we still not trying? It's time that we all began before it's too late and say we can't. People may not remember how much you've earned, but your selfless deeds and decent behavior will remain in the hearts forever. In this one place, we have got one chance to live one life. So what are you waiting for? Thank you. 
My name is Kripendra Amatya. I am a student of fine art in Kathmandu University Center for Art and Designing. My poem style is Vesuvius. In the year of 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius shook the earth, blasting off hot lava, froze history for futurity. Death is unstoppable, nor undeniable. So why should we fear to die? If life is to make a history, Vesuvius has solved this mystery. Corpses which would have dissolved in earth is now protected by Vesuvius. Life that have gone in vain is now saved to tell its tale. Should time praise Vesuvius or cry for, the, for those who died? Death is certain as you know. But can we be happy for this natural flow? Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Hemantika Palike and the title of my poem is Uppercase U and a lowercase s. Us. Big fish eats the small fish, they said. That's life. Deal with it, they said. But how about I don't deal with it? How about I don't give in this time around? The society has always taught us to give in. You see a bigger fish, give in. You see the engineering, give in. You're a female, give in. You see a stronger opposition, give in. Now let me remind them of something they've forgotten for quite some time. Take them back to the 19th century, the time when we created our image, our image of the beer gorb Kalis that fills our chest with pride till date. But look at us now, look at our state. We're nothing but a bunch of cowards engaged in the so-called development projects that do nothing, functions zero, but somehow, fills in a few hungry pockets till deep. We're engaged in making slotty videos and movies that usually turns out to be grade B. And in between all of this, we've forgotten our identity, forgotten about the mother. Yeah, we speak big, and that too in louder voices, but maybe we've also forgotten such a basic thing as actions speak louder than words that Prithvi Naren Shah did not unify Nepal by preaching about it. Today, we're unable to help our own mother as she's being encroached by the monsters around, and we don't make a sound, as parts of her beautiful body are being marked and snatched by them, as her children sleep and wake up to be a part of someone else. They're in the same place, same house, same area, but a different territory. They're also trying to claim one of her greatest sons, Buddha. But here, even divorced parents have to go through a hell lot of procedures for their child's custody. And here, all they have to do is speak, suppressing our voices when it's not even their child. And yeah, again, they're big, so their words spread more. And they're trying to recreate our sights and making everyone question our very existence. But though we be but little, we are here. We're strong, although clueless. So we're waiting to be noticed, to be seen, waiting to be protected. The boundary line between them and us is like a mouth of a disgusting monster that rips and swallows the flesh of our mother. And we, her children just stare quietly, stand still disturbingly. Now I wouldn't say that we've not tried. We have, but maybe it was just not enough. Maybe all of us aren't in it. Maybe we act more helpless than we actually are. Maybe we're not so far. Maybe we can still get back up and thrive again. Thank you. We have come to the end of today's competition round. If you want your favorite poet to win, vote for them by liking the photos and videos on facebook.com slash top 7 young poets. If you are a student studying between grade 7 and bachelor's level, you can apply for Nepal's top 7 young poets 2014. The application submissions are now open. 
You can call the TYA office at 4257250 or send us an email at youthtya at the gmail.com for the application details. We will be back next week with another episode of Youth TV Show. Till then, have a nice week. Namaste. Mm -hmm.